Hello. I am Epic Dude Guy, also known as Robbie. I'm here joined with all of my friends and Prince of Persia Warrior within, but not joined with sound. So, uh, yeah. Let's start in three, two, one, go. So this is Warrior Within, the sequel to The Sense of Time. And this is uh, where they went kind of edgy with the game. So you'll see a lot of that. And the category I'm doing is zipless. There's a zipping glitch we discovered a long time ago. And it completely breaks the game. So this category will be not using that glitch, but all the other ones we found. Picking up a secondary here, um, doing all the fights, and then there's a boss sequence at the end of this boat section. And I need the secondary weapon for that to do a lot more damage. So there's actually three swords that can drop at the start there. And two of them are good, and one of them is bad. So we, we got a decent RG there. No. <laughs> Normally there's some uh, really cool rock music going on, if you remember in this game. You can just imagine it now. <laughs> so here's the boss I was talking about, Shadi, she's called. She has interesting outwear. I'm going to use the secondary parry attack. Which does, it's like the best move in the game, pretty much. And accompanied with vault attacks, we can basically do this fight in a scripted way. So it's no RNG at all. We still lose though, even though we've flawlessed the fight. She beats the prince and eludes him about an empress. I wonder what that means. Now we get introduced to birds. Birds have a very interesting role in this game. There's a really cool trick you can do in a, a glitchless version of this run. Or you can use the bird as like uh, to scale a really high wall. But I'm going to use the bird to get damaged while climbing over a fence. Now why that is important is there's basically a script kind of running when you climb over a fence. And by getting damaged during it, we interrupt, interrupt the script and we store the location we're at now. I'm not sure if that was good enough, but we have to go with it anyway. So. If I did it correctly, I basically stored that position and I can consume that storage later on. When I climb over a ledge, the game will try to pull me back all the way to where I was. And I can use that to skip a cutscene. Because uh, when it tries to pull you back, it still accounts for all the collision you are in at that moment. And it happens to work out just the way we would want it to, sometimes. <laughs> it can also not work, and then you just die. So I'm getting close to it here. There will be a cutscene where you get a sword upgrade, but we don't need that. So let's see here. Jump over the cutscene first. And now let's see if we have the storage. We do. Oh, we made it, okay. 
So it was probably <laughs> probably really hard to tell what actually happened, but um, where I was, basically the area where I was pulled to, the end of it is not loaded, so it pulls me into the corridor from the unloaded uh, way. And then because of the wall, it stops me there. Then I can continue. So that saves like 30 seconds or something. It's pretty cool. And the glitch, um, the storage glitch I did, is actually useful in all of the three trilogy games, which is really awesome. It was a glitch that occurred to us like uh, a lot of the time, just randomly, and we never knew how how it worked. And then at some point, Vinev and Dirk and Chu together, uh, they figured it out, and then we made use of it in all of the games, which is really neat. Small skip there to get on the ledge slightly earlier. Now we're almost at the part where we get the rewind ability, which is kind of what these games are all about. And it's also what makes this game really broken. So this game is, you could say it's sort of open world, kind of, and they made a solid attempt at it, the developers. Um, what they did was they created these story gates to keep track of where you are in the story, because you can go to the same spot multiple times. And we're going to totally abuse those to skip ahead into the game. But first, I'm going to do another glitch. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> this is the menu glitch. If I have the menu open, then close it, and then open it again really quickly, then it gets into this uh, glitched state where it keeps popping up and that unexpectedly pauses the game and combining that with rewinding I can do kind of these teleports with certain animations. That's a jump I want to roll actually. Maybe that's a roll. Still a jump, okay now I'm out of sense. <laughs> so with the wall run animation it's really easy. Uh, but there's not always enough space to do a wall run. And with a roll, you can do a tiny teleport as well. That was what I was trying to do here. But I messed it up. Um, I didn't realize it, but it's a bit harder without the sound. <laughs> kind of have to time exactly. Like you have a couple of frames where you can roll before the menu pops up again. And I, well, I did a jump anyway, so it's pretty bad. And here is the most interesting part of the run. This is where, uh, where I am now and where I'm going is like very far apart story-wise, but very close physically. So what all I need to do is wall run there. And with that specific setup, you can pretty easily get here. And very uh, luckily for us, there's also a checkpoint here. Because the next area doesn't load naturally, but with a checkpoint and a, a death, I can make it load. Now we're not there yet because we still have story gate uh, three, I think, at this point. But in a moment, we'll have 58. So that should, that might give you a sense of how much we're skipping. There's like, uh, at the end, we would have 64. So this this skips skips about two hours of gameplay, which is uh, very good. Hello. Can I read donations? 
Yes, you can. These donations were meant to be read an hour ago, but because of difficulties, we will read them now. <laughs> okay. So we have $15 from Don with bees, then Anonymous with $50, thank you, and then Chris with $15 with welcome back. Thank you for all the donations. Keep donating. Yes, thank you for that. Maybe we get audio if we get enough donations. Yeah. So, wait, I died, right? I think I did. <laughs> now I just need to make my way up top there. Just like this. And then here, the state progresses and that is a sign that we have the right story gate. Now for the fun part, uh, we're going to go through a metamorphosis of some sorts. That of course requires sacrifice, so we lose our body for a moment. And then we turn into the sand wreath. This is what you would normally be at this point, so you need to... Actually, you could carry on without turning into the sand wraith, but the sand wraith has this, has this power where he gains a sand every 12 seconds. And the downside of being him is that he loses health over time slowly. That's not that much of an issue though, and we really not like the sand a lot. Also, jumping is hard. One. Whoops. See why sands are useful? <laughs> also rewind mistakes. <laughs> yeah, for the longest time we had the zipping category do the route I'm doing right now. Oh, yeah, I need to kill these guys. And we couldn't figure out a way to do it without zips. Like I was trying really hard to figure that out. And eventually, we got enough glitches figured out that we can do this route. So that's really cool. I'm going to get a secondary weapon here once again. Because the animation for throwing a weapon negates fall damage. I can't do that on any ledge though, because then the prince would just grab the ledge. But if we're out of bounds, then there's no ledge to grab. So that's what I'm doing right now. To go in a precise position, look a bit to the left, and then throw my weapon, and I'll drop down without getting any fall damage. I need to get go here to get a sword upgrade. And I'm going to do some timing here. So this is the scorpion sword. This is the final weapon you would get without getting all of the upgrades. And now I'm going to do quicksand. Which I kind of need to focus for. I'm going to do 21 jumps, like this. Uh-oh. Quickly try something. One second. Uh, one more. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> sound.
<laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for fixing the sound. <laughs> yeah, so what I did there, uh, quicksand is, oh god. Um, yeah, so you jump and then you rewind and you slowly sink into the ground, hence the name. Oh, I should probably do this glitch correctly. Uh, and I'm also combining it with sand duping, which is why I could like, keep on rewinding. Basically, if you just rewind at... Okay, not sure why that happened. If you rewind at the same time, you would get a sand. You basically get it back once again right away. Trying to do another menu glitch here. This is the menu launching. It's kind of hard to explain what's exactly happening, but the result is uh, pretty. <laughs> so you, you have all these different animations where the menu glitch gets you a different result. And the one where you wall run and then do the secondary attack gives you this launch animation, I guess. But what's actually happening is it propels you into the wall at a very high speed. And because of the wall collision, it results into this kind of arc motion that the prince undergoes. I'm doing another version of quicksand. If you do it off of a ledge, it's actually, it gets you more into the ground every time you do it. You just need to do three here and not get screwed by these ladies here. All I did was, uh, I went under a trigger for enemies so I can do another launch here without getting interrupted. Sadly, I lost my rewind, so I'll have to wait for that. Two cents here. So I start the menu glitch, jump into the wall, uh, and then mistime it. Perfect. And do a secondary. Yeah, this should work. And then spam the map, and then I rewind again now. <laughs> it probably doesn't make any sense anyway, but just trust that it works. And here's the uh, the Haka, kind of the bad guy of this game. Luckily, he doesn't notice us. Notice us. Normally, you would have to climb up and go around him where he doesn't see you, but because we triggered the cutscene in a weird way, we can just go right away. And if you played normally, the Dhaka, the Dahaka would chase you all throughout the game, and this is where you would finally get rid of him, but funnily enough, this is the first time we actually see him. Get rid of him right away. Also side rolling most of the time when I have a lot of ground to cover because it's the fastest way to move. Pretty much the goal, as soon as you get the sword, your goal is just to get to the end boss and kill her. Um, there's two different ways to do that now. What I'm doing is a little bit slower, but it's more consistent. And the other way, you would mess around with story gates a bit more. You can, like the one I used to advance in, in the story is very 
consistent. You, all you have to do is basically die at a checkpoint and then you get it. But some story gates also let you uh, progress by rewind, like going through them and then rewinding, and then sometimes it gives you the story gate you want, which is not that fun in my opinion. So I'll rather <laughs> just go a bit around. Here you would normally have the the slow down ability. It wouldn't be as hard to make this door, but now it sometimes is, especially when the dogs are not nice, but they are very nice this time. So that's easy. The benefit of doing this route is that you get a very nice sword upgrade. Hello. Hello. You have time for a donation? Go ahead. We have five dollars from Seven Slow Sand Seven. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Epic Dude Guy. Do you think the name Quicksand is weird since the skip is pretty slow? What do you think we rename this trick? I knew you would agree. Thank you very much. Remember to not get triple skip at the end. Otherwise, this run would be too good. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah, we have some uh, discussions about the name of the Quicksand glitch, but it's actually the perfect name. So there's not much of an argument there. Here I'm going to try again to do the launching, but this time it's a little bit different because there's no wall behind me. Instead, there's just space that I want to cross. You can see kind of get more insight into how this works. It's going to propel me backwards with a lot of speed. There you go. I went so fast that I went through the loading trigger. <laughs> now you could say that that looks like a zip, which I kind of agree with. Um, but this category is simply not using the zip glitch, which is a specific glitch, not anything that looks like a zip. So we're all good. Now this jump has been bugging me a lot lately. Pretty darn precise. Okay, nice. That's not what I wanted. Okay, we enter this section kind of in a weird way, so that's why the clockwork isn't moving, and that's why I can use it to go down. And this is the point where my route and the other route uh, merge again. They would also get to this point, but in a different way. And there's also a cutscene here, kind of an introductory cutscene to this area. Because we never went here, the cutscene is still there. But if I jump into it and die before I would trigger it, then the cutscene just goes away. Which is very nice because the cutscene would actually uh, prevent me from going down here at all. So we have to skip it. We're going to go through this guy. Oh, okay. Doesn't usually charge at me like that, but that's okay. As long as he doesn't kill me here. So now we're getting pl pretty close to the end. There would be a section or a cutscene where. Um, I would turn back into the prince, but I would like to skip that cutscene and keep the ability to regain sands. Saves time by skipping the cutscene and then you can do a couple more skips with the sands you have. 
So let's see if we manage that. It's going to require another uh, role menu glitch thingy. So use the corner to get a correct angle. Set up right before the cutscene. The menu glitch and then roll backwards right before it pops. Come on. Okay, there we go. Okay, you can see that in action. Now I'm gonna go around the cutscene. So that's the cutscene skipped. That's very good. I just need to make sure I don't die to these traps. Kind of the hardest part of this run. And then do another launch here. The annoying part about launches is that the prince likes to attack instead. Or like. Wall running is also blocking in this game. It gets kind of uh, confusing for the game sometimes, which one you want to do. Maybe I can just skip the traps like that. And there's two more cutscenes that I want to skip. Pretty lengthy ones as well. But luckily, we have walls to wall run on. Oh. Kind of messed up the timing there. There you go. Like the, the wall runs just gives you s such a big teleport, it's really nice. And there's another cutscene here. Okay, let's take this a bit safe. Okay, very nice. Just need to hit the trigger there for the next section. And then we should be good to go on the final boss fight. And the final boss fight has been kind of a struggle since this game became a speedrun. <laughs> We've improved it a lot over the years, but it's still kind of random sometimes. There's basically these tornado cycles that Kailina can do. And we want to, she can do three of them in total, and we want to skip all of them. But the more you skip them, the more she wants to do them. So we have to do the fight in a very precise way to be able to skip all of them and also not die. That can be a problem sometimes as well. I also didn't make a save, so that's interesting. Guess I'll have to not die, at least. So here's Kalina. Gonna dodge the first attacks. Okay, that's not good. Probably means I won't be able to skip all of the tornado cycles because I need to take damage in order to do that. messed up now. Yeah, here Kalina is like, the first time, which she's correct in, because this is the first time we fight her, but normally when you play the game, this is the second time you fight her. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I have too low health now. 
So I have to win this. Normally you would lose it. And now she goes into turn. And then she just always goes into tornado. So if you get, if you just get one instead of more, then I'm okay with that. Normally you would lose the clash and then she doesn't go into tornado right away. You can activate slow-mo and then uh, make her go all the way to two hits remaining. Then trigger the final cutscene and then hope she doesn't go into tornado after that. So now we'll pick up basically at the slow-mo start, put her to two health. One more. And then placebo, jump on her. And now we hope she doesn't go tornado. Very nice, that's time. And then doing the run this way, you also get the, to kill Kailina as the Sand Wraith, which is kind of funny on its own. So yeah, that was uh, Warrior Within. I hope you enjoyed it without the sound. It was still fun running it. So uh, thank you for having me.